Feast of Saint Angela Merici, we begin in, we begin by honoring her with her with a prayer. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Let us pray. May the Virgin Saint Angela never fail to commend us to your compassion, O Lord. We pray that following the lessons of her charity and prudence, we may hold fast to your teaching and express it in what we do. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. At the Masses this weekend, we will have the annual throat blessing in honor of St. Blaise. However, this year, it will be a general blessing over the entire congregation towards the end of Mass. There will be no individual blessing of throats this year to keep everyone's health and safety a top priority. At the 11.30 a.m. Mass this Sunday, we will be joined by St. Julie families who send their children to Cardinal Joseph Bernadine's school. This will be part of Catholic Schools Week, which begins on Sunday. Whether you are able to join us in person or not, please pray for all of our students and their families. Tuesday, February 2nd, is the Feast of the Presentation of the Lord. Candles will be blessed at the 8 a.m. Daily Mass on Tuesday morning. Parishioners are invited to bring candles from home that they will use in their own personal prayer and devotion to the Daily Mass for on Tuesday for the blessing. We'll have faith formation in-person in -person classes for our children next Wednesday night, next Thursday night, and next Saturday. Men's group will be meeting on Thursday, January 28th at 7 p.m. via Zoom. Please join Deacon John Benz for evening prayer on Zoom. Evening prayer, or Vespers, is part of the official prayer of the church, which priests, deacons, and religious pray faithfully every day. Even if you are not familiar with it, Deacon John provides an easy format for everyone to follow along with the prayer. For more information, please contact G Deacon John Benz. I forgot to have included in the bulletin in the last few weekends the announcement that we will begin the annual Catholic Appeal this coming weekend. And so this weekend will be the official announcement of the appeal. The next weekend will be the commitment weekend. This year, there will be several options given to make your pledge to the appeal as safely as possible. Please remember that the parish stands to benefit from your contribution to the annual Catholic appeal. Lastly, we began the Renew My Church conversations this past Monday evening. The parishioners serving on the grouping, feedback, and discernment team are Kate Kempke from our Finance Council, Danny Salgado from our Parish Council, and Joanne Tuzik as one of the, our longtime parishioners. If you have any questions, thoughts, concerns, or input that you would like to share, you are invited to connect with one of them. I will keep everyone as informed as possible regarding everything that is brought up in the conversations with the other parishes. This coming Tuesday, February 2nd, as I mentioned, is the Feast of the Presentation of the Lord. It commemorates the day when Joseph and Mary brought the infant Jesus to the temple 40 days after his birth. According to Jewish law and custom, a woman was supposed to go into a period of purification for 40 days after giving birth. So thus, like all faithful Jewish people of the time, Joseph and Mary likewise observed this custom. And so February 2nd marks 40 days after December 25th, which was, of course, the day we celebrated Jesus' birth. Historically, there is clear evidence for the custom of this feast. In the fourth century, there was, there was a woman named Etheria who made a pilgrimage to Jerusalem. And while there, she kept a journal. And in that journal, she wrote down in detail the liturgical rites and celebrations that were observed by Christians in fourth century Jerusalem. The journal was discovered in 1887, and since then has given us an unprecedented glimpse of how the first Christians celebrated through liturgy the most significant moment of Christ's life. Part of the details written in Etheria's journal centered around the celebrations of Jesus' birth. 
which in those days was actually observed on January 6th, the Feast of the Epiphany. She described a very elaborate nighttime procession 40 days after the celebration of Jesus' birth. The dark streets of Jerusalem were filled with Christians carrying candles lit, which lit the night. From the way she described it, the procession was a sight to see. When the church moved the observance of Jesus' birth to December 25th, the, the feast of the presentation of the Lord was transferred perpetually to February 2nd. Although it is not as widely observed today as it was in years past, there is still the option to hold a candlelight procession on the evening, on the evening of February 2nd. It had also become the custom to bless candles on the feast of the presentation of the Lord. Some of those blessed candles were for people to take home, and some were for the church to use throughout the year. For us as Catholic Christians, the feast of the presentation of the Lord is more about Jesus than it is the purification of the Virgin Mary, because it marks the first time when Jesus, the light of the world, was brought into the temple. Symbolically, this was the moment when God's Son, who is light from light, illuminated the house of God and uh, uh, the, uh, illuminated the house of God on earth to be a beacon for all to follow and be led to the light that can never be extinguished. Prior to Jesus' coming into the world, the light of God had been blocked out by the sinfulness of humanity. Of humanity. But with Jesus coming into the temple, and into the temple of our hearts, God's people are forever enlightened by the radiance of God's own wisdom. And so as we mark this important feast, whether we can join in the Mass or not, let us constantly be aware of the light of God that is in us, and let that light shine for the benefit of all the people in the world. As we anticipate the feast of the presentation of the Lord, let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Almighty, ever-living ever -living God, we humbly implore your majesty that just as your only begotten Son was presented on this day in the temple, in the substance of our flesh, so by your grace we may be presented to you with minds made pure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.